The vast majority of the manufacturing incentives from the nearly $53 billion Chips and Science Act have now been allocated. Yesterday, President Biden was in Syracuse, uh, New York, to announce an agreement with memory chip maker Micron for up to $6.1 billion in subsidies. Joining us uh, for uh, where things stand now, former White House Chips Coordinator Ronnie Chatterjee. He's a professor at Duke's Fuqua uh, School of Business. It's good, as usual, it's good to see you. Uh, Professor, can I, can I call you Professor? Uh, how, wh where are we? What, how, how much have we done? What do you think about, about how much is left? Well, you can call me Ronnie if you like, but you know we've accomplished a lot. I think that over the last 45 days, you've seen four major awards to TSMC, Samsung, Intel, and now Micron. And with that, 85% of that 39 billion you talked about has been spoken for. And that's a huge accomplishment for a program that really started in 2022. As you remember, there was a lot of concern over whether the government could execute on this program, whether they would be able to get the money out the door, and whether we would be able to build chip making again in the United States. And I think we've seen really good progress, a lot of work to do, but we're on the right track. The, uh, I, I guess it's, it's important at the same time that we're talking about this, we just are funding uh, Taiwan. And I, I guess there is a pressing need for us to get, uh, to get prepared here onshore. Well, well, that's right. If you think about the, now, and the number of chips we produce in the U.S., the most advanced nodes, it's very low. I mean, we don't really produce much at all. And now, with the four major producers, Samsung, Intel, TSMC, and Micron, for the first time in decades, we have all the leading-edge producers here in the United States. We're the only country that can boast to have all the top manufacturers now with facilities in the United States. That's what the CHIPS program has accomplished. Um, there's going to be a lot of work to do to build these factories, to get the workers we need to uh, work there and be productive in the factories. But this is a great start. And, and relatively quickly, in terms of the last 45 days, seeing these major awards, it'll help the United States on national security, as you mentioned. But it's also going to create a lot of jobs and economic prosperity here at home. We always want to try to do that, obviously, Ronnie. But there, there are arguments on both sides of, of the government picking winners and losers, whether it's, uh, you know, industries, total industries, or, you know, we're trying to transition here, transition away there, picking individual companies. You're always going to get some, some pushback from people that say that the government isn't very uh, good at this. Do you, do you agree that normally this isn't the, the best way and maybe this was a uh, a unique circumstance where this makes a lot more sense to, I mean, it was a bipartisan bill when it finally happened. There were, there were Republicans that voted for it. That's right. I think the reason there was bipartisan support is because the importance of computer chips national security. I mean, Econ 101 says exactly what you're saying, which is that you, know, you want to make things where they cost the least, you get the most scale, and you get the best production so we can all buy the highest quality products at the best price. When it comes to computer chips, though, if all of those are produced in just one part of the world and we were to suddenly not to have access to those chips, that's a big national security vulnerability for the United States of America. So in this case, I do think it's important for the government to put a push behind the chips industry, not by supporting a single firm or just American firms, but being able to support across a wide variety of technologies and also research and development, and not just in one state, but across the country. I mean, you saw these awards in Idaho, Oregon, New York, Arizona, Ohio. So to me, that looks like laying a strong foundation for an industry, not picking winners and losers when it comes to computer chips. Just ask you one more a question along those lines, Ronnie. Let's say that, that you are buying commodity type chips where uh, the level of security or even expertise is not what it is in, in other areas. If comparative advantage would make sense for in terms of cost to make it somewhere besides uh, onshore domestically, would that still make sense or, or do you just blanket statement, jobs here, bring it back here, uh, labor might be two or three times as expensive as it would be somewhere else. That, that totally goes against everything that we did for decades, where we try mm -hmm. to get a—and it helped, inflation-wise, long term. You, you just think a blanket statement, we're making them here, even if it's going to cost two or three times as much? I think it depends on the industries that we are supporting and why we're making them here. I mean, you saw this during the pandemic. We had supply chain disruptions where we couldn't get access to some basic products and some really important inputs. You remember cars were sitting on the lots uh, with dealers because they didn't have the chips. 
And when cars were in short supply, prices went up, and that actually drove inflation. So for some key products, some critical products like computer chips, if we're able to build that industry here in the United States, and we do that with sort of discretion and milestones around construction of factories, around production of chips, and around the right technologies, I think that's a good bet for the United States of America to make. And I think that's why it had bipartisan support. And it's amazing to see now these major producers all locating facilities in the United States. That was not necessarily going to happen without the CHIPS Act. And uh, it's amazing to see the $300 billion of private sector investment. So this is a, you know, a, a public sector investment of $52 billion, but it's already leveraged to over $300 billion of private sector investment. That, to me, is a sign that the private sector is going to do things here in the United States. And they're betting on the chip industry here again, too. Well, I hate to admit, maybe it's going to work well, Ronnie, maybe uh, in, in this case, but let's just not, uh, it's just the broad brush we can't use for all these interests. And maybe it'll help Intel, you know, get above a 10-year, a, a wherever it is, that last time was 32.